Different areas within eThomas containing diagnosis codes. This video will detail different places diagnosis codes are stored in eThomas, diagnosis codes outside of eThomas, and suggestions on moving forward. One of the areas within eThomas that contain diagnosis codes is within the patient information. If you go to a patient, you will see that this particular patient has two diagnosis codes stored within their patient information. And if you post charges for this patient, the diagnosis codes from their patient information will automatically populate in the diagnosis code area within posting charges. This will cause problems when ICD-10 becomes the standard. In order to see which patients have a primary and or secondary diagnosis code listed within their patient information, click the search button, then click the export patients button, choose patient account number, last name, first name, primary diagnosis, and secondary diagnosis. Then hit the export button. It's going to pull a report and it's going to save to a file called exportdata.txt. Once you go to the path where Thomas has said the exportdata.txt file has been saved to, double click it and the patients and their diagnosis codes, if any, will be listed within this text file. If you have Microsoft Excel, you may also open the data in that. Choose File, Open, browse to the location where the file was stored, and over the, in this area you need to choose All Files, Double click export data.txt, choose delimited, hit next, uncheck tab, and select comma, hit next. You can leave this at general, hit finish, and now the information is in a readable Excel spreadsheet. Once you have this information, you have some options. You can either go through all of your patients and remove the diagnosis codes, this will be very time consuming. You can go through all of your patients and replace the diagnosis codes with the ICD-10 equivalent, which would also be very time consuming. You can set up the system setting default DX with a value of 1 so that when posting charges, the system will use the diagnosis codes from the previous claim instead of the default diagnosis codes inside the patient information. However, you must keep in mind that if you had that setting turned on for ICD-9, it's going to remember your ICD-9 codes. With a list generated, you can get an idea on how many patients have the default diagnosis filled out, and you can come up with a plan as to when and how you might want to tackle the primary and secondary diagnosis codes inside the patient. Another area within eThomas which contains diagnosis information is within case management. If you use cases, you'll want to keep in mind that the cases you've set up have ICD-9 codes in them. We suggest editing your current case to indicate ICD-9, saving it, and then adding a new case for ICD-10, copying the information from the previous case, and of course putting in your ICD-10 equivalent diagnosis codes, and then saving that. Another area within eThomas which stores diagnosis information is within the patient referral area. This can be used to create referral sheets to be sent to primary care physicians for treatments. Your diagnosis information will probably be ICD-9 at the moment. We suggest you create a new referral once ICD-10 becomes the standard. You may also have a diagnosis code stored in your procedure code. Go to Code Files, Procedure, Procedure. Double click any of your procedure codes and in this box you may have an ICD-9 diagnosis code. Keep in mind that when you post charges and use this particular procedure code, the diagnosis code entered here will automatically populate. 
If you don't want that to happen, remove this diagnosis code from that area, or if you want it to populate with an ICD-10 code, put in your ICD-10 equivalent. The last couple areas within eThomas which may contain diagnosis information is under reports. You may have set up a custom report to pull diagnosis information for ICD-9. This report will either need to be modified or you will need to create a new report for ICD-10. The service analysis reports may have also been set up to pull diagnosis codes for ICD-9. This report will also either need to be modified or a new report will need to be created. Areas outside of eThomas are just as important as those inside of the program. Whether you use pre-printed route slips purchased from Genius Solutions or one created in Microsoft Word, you should begin thinking about what your plan is for your route slips or encounter forms after October 1, 2014, provided you have diagnosis codes listed on your route slips. A suggestion is to create a crosswalk for your office. Take the diagnosis codes listed on your current route slip, these are probably your most commonly used diagnosis codes, and find the ICD-10 equivalent for these codes. There are many internet sites you can use to begin your research. It is not recommended to change your existing route slip until you are more comfortable with ICD-10 coding. There has been some suggestion to leave the diagnosis code area blank on your route slip and allow the provider to write in the diagnosis. If you have a pre-printed route slip, you will want to think about when and how much you should reorder of the route slips that have the ICD-9 codes listed. A suggestion would be to make photocopies of this route slip until you are ready to purchase new route slips with either ICD-10 codes or blank areas to write in the diagnosis codes. Don't be in a rush to order new forms right away. Get comfortable with the ICD-10 changes that are coming your way first. You will need to determine what codes your office will need on the route slip first anyway. If you have a route slip created in Microsoft Word, it is not advisable to change the existing route slip. Make a copy of that route slip and then you can begin making any changes on the copy. Again, a suggestion would be not to rush into it, but to think about what diagnosis codes, if any, you want on your route slip. First, create yourself a crosswalk in order to aid you and your office. This crosswalk can also serve many functions. You will have created a guide for your office in which the commonly used ICD-9 codes will now have ICD-10 matches. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching.